Bruce Johnson, president and founder of Bizscalers and the Bizscalers Club. And today I want to talk to you about three strategies for you to become a better negotiator. Three strategies to becoming a better negotiator. Now, recently I completed a course for our Bizscalers Club on uh, mastering the art of negotiating with anyone about anything. And in the process of doing that course, one of the things I realized is that the vast majority of business owners and entrepreneurs have never taken a course or read a book about negotiation. Just think about it. Have you ever read a book on negotiating or taken a course on negotiating? Yet negotiating is something that we all do every single day. If you have kids, from the moment they get up, you're negotiating. If you have a spouse, you're negotiating. When you get to work, you're negotiating with the employees or with your executive team. You're negotiating with customers and vendors. I mean, all day long, you are negotiating with all kinds of people about all kinds of things. But rarely have we taken the time to actually study it. And by the way, if you want to study and learn a little bit more about this, make sure you check out the Bizscalers Club at scalingclub.com, scalingclub.com. So today I want to talk to you about three different strategies that you can use immediately that can help you become a better negotiator. And the better negotiator you are, then obviously, you know, the more sales you're going to get, the more deals you're going to close for better margins. Uh, you're going to have better employees. You're going to have a better culture. You're going to have better terms with your vendors. I mean, literally everything in your business can get better when you're really great at the skill that you do every single day called negotiating. So here are three different strategies. The first one I want to talk to you about is this. Don't meet in the middle. Don't meet in the middle. Now, for most of us, we've been taught that negotiation should always be fair. And for many of us, we think fair means meet in the middle. So let's say you're selling a package for $3,000 and the customer comes back or client comes back and says, you know, that's kind of expensive. I think I could do 2,500. Now, the natural thing that sounds so fair is, well, why don't we meet in the middle? So let's do 2,750. Now that sounds fair, but is it really? Are both parties bringing the same value to the conversation, the negotiation. For example, uh, let's say you're an accounting firm and your $3,000 package is gonna save that business, let's say $60,000. You're already bringing a lot of value. Why should you be going down? You're charging way less than the value that they're actually going to get from that. And what are they giving you? They're giving you the value of $2,500, but it's just cash. You also have actual expenses. You have employees, you've got overhead, you've got time, you've got a lot of other clients you're trying to manage, et cetera. So, you know, just coming down to meeting in the middle doesn't always turn out to be fair when you really think about both parties and what they're bringing to the table. The middle is rarely the right place to go. So what you want to do is you want to begin to go off of that and think about what would be a good win for both players. Uh, in fact, this week I had a member in the Biscalers Club call me and tell me uh, he'd just been taking the course on negotiating. And he said, you know, that thing about not meeting in the middle, man, it really was helpful. He said, I had a client who's been a longstanding client, gives us a lot of money, had another need. And, uh, you know, I gave them a price. Of course, they came at a price much lower than that. And because they've been such a good client in the past, I probably would have just given them the lower price just to get the business. But because I was taking that course of negotiating, I thought, ha, ah, ha, ah, I can negotiate because everything's negotiable. And his first thought was, hey, I should just send out a price right in the middle. And then he remembered, oh, wait a second, Bruce said, don't meet in the middle. So he found a price above that. And so he came back with that price and the company said, great, sounds wonderful. I mean, they just wanted something to feel like they were getting a deal. Now, you can't just go from, you know, 3,000 to 2,950 because they're probably going to come back and make you know, offers. But what you could do is you could say, you know, based on my margins and what we're doing, you know, like I could, I could probably give away 5% on this. And so maybe you come back at 2,850 and the vast majority of companies would have taken that. And because your margins are 10 or 15 percent, you're still making margin. Now you got the work coming in. You're OK. It's a win for you and it's a win for them. But you're not down to 2,500, which would actually be costing you money because you'd be losing your margin on that. So it's really easy to not meet in the middle. Just figure out what the value is. Now I'm going to give you a strategy number three so you don't even have to come off price. But don't go right in the middle. It's rarely fair. If you do that, you'll become a better negotiator. Don't settle for the middle. Number two. And by the way, if you want to go deeper, remember to go to scalingclub.com. The second strategy that I would encourage you to think about today is that of making sure that you always negotiate for win-win, not win-lose. A lot of business owners and entrepreneurs think, you know, if they want to become a good negotiator, a good negotiator is someone who gets every penny that they possibly can. Like they, they know how to skin the cat. Well, that is absolutely not true. Good negotiators don't try to skin the cat because if you skin the cat, you get a skinny cat. And if you've ever had a skinned cat, it is not a very pretty sight. Moreover, you end up getting a really bad reputation in the community if you're that kind of person. 
In fact, in the course in Biscayler's Club, I actually tell a story about one of our clients who about 18 years ago was negotiating a you know seven-figure deal, and the other person was one of those skin the cat kind of people, and he ended up killing the deal because he didn't want to work with that person, so that person lost that deal. And then on three separate occasions over the years, other people who've been trying to negotiate with that guy contacted my client and asked them, what do you think about this guy? And on three separate occasions, he's told them, don't do a deal with this guy. So he's now lost on four multi-million dollar deals, not knowing that because he was a jerk 18 years ago, he's still paying the price. Listen, you never want to be a jerk. You always want to go for a win-win. And when you go for a win-win, the other party is more likely to give up some ground simply because you're polite and respectful and nice. There's just nothing wrong with trying to get a win-win. You want to be strong, but you want to be nice and want to win-win. Give you a classic example of this from just a couple weeks ago in my life. My wife lost the diamond on her uh, wedding ring. So we decided, hey, it's time to go get another one. We just were coming up on 35 years of marriage at the time. Now, past 35 years, but uh, you know, sounds like a great idea. So we go to the grocery, uh, go to the, not the grocery store, go to the uh, jewelry store on a Saturday afternoon. And so we're in there, uh, they were really busy. So we ended up getting the manager, which actually turned out to be a great deal. And uh, so we had a delightful conversation, spent a couple hours there, but we we're going through. And at the beginning she had said, you know, what's your price range? So we gave her, you know, the low range and the high range. And you know, they're always going to go toward the high range, always. So, so I knew that was going to happen. So she found, you know, brought out a bunch of rings, the, but she brought out one ring that was just a little bit above our upper range. And, uh, and it was clear when she brought that out, my wife's eyes lit up. We both saw it. We knew this was the ring. It was great. She looked at me and she said, well, you know, I know you said this was your high range, so I'll take 200 off. And, um, and that way it'd be right at your range. I said, thank you very much, blah, blah, blah. We had a nice conversation. I then said, well, you know what? And I purchased this size. I always like to make sure we take a day to think about it. And so we'll get back to you on Monday. Well, I got home and on Sunday, I was looking at my calendar for the week. And when I looked at my calendar, I realized that I had booked, you know, not me, but other people have booked appointments with me. So I was booked all day long, which I almost never do because I hate being booked back to back to back. And uh, so I decided to send her an email on Sunday. And so I said, you know, hey, thank you so much. You know, we thoroughly enjoyed it. This is the ring my wife has selected she wants. All we have to do now is negotiate out the price. I said, as we talked about yesterday, you know, I'm a business coach. I believe in win-win. I told you I just completed a course of negotiation. And uh, I said, so, you know, I don't want to go back and forth for days. I just, I want you to win. I want me to win. Uh, you need to protect your margins. I know you need to protect your your quota for the, the month. So, all I want to know from you is what is a fair price that is a win for you and a win for me? And if we can get a good price, we can, I can say tomorrow, let's get it done. She writes back the next day and says, hey, thank you so much. It was delightful meeting you guys. And uh, I appreciate your approach negotiating. So here's the price I can give you. And the price she gave me was right in the middle of what I was hoping she would give. And so it was a done deal. Very simple negotiation. But now, not only did I get a win, not only did she get a win, so she's got margin, I reduced the price that I had to pay. My wife is really happy. Uh, but now I can walk into that jewelry store anytime and I'm not a jerk, right? Like I can now continue to do deals because she knows that this is a person who wants a win-win. I want you to win. I want you to be profitable. At the same time, I want to get a good value for me. It wins for both of us. When you have a win-win approach, it always wins for you. Uh, be strong. You know, you want to negotiate to get a better deal. Like I could have paid the the amount just taking the 200 off that would have been fine but the reality was you know you can you should negotiate everything is negotiable so number one make sure you don't meet in the middle number two make sure that you shoot for a win-win not win-lose and the third idea would would be always make sure you prepare options ahead of time prepare your options ahead of time one of the mistakes a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs make when they're trying to negotiate is they think everything is always about price and it's not there are a lot of other variables in the equation and you should negotiate those out before you start always doing the price deal. This is how you could avoid coming off the 3000, for example. Or if you want to come off the 3000, they have to exchange some value for that. So don't just come off price. If you thought about it ahead of time and you have this $3,000 package, you might be able to say, well, normally people pay for that right up front and they pay 3000. You could come back and say, well, what if we could work some terms out in payments? And now whether they're three or four or six payments of $500, let's say, um, you could do that and you still get the 3000 And so it, it, you know, for them, the 25 was related to their cash flow for this month. So if you gave them payments, they would be happy to pay that full price of 3000 to get everything that's included in. Um, or it might be 
that uh, you could come off of your 3000 but you couldn't do it and deliver it this month because you are in a busy month right now and you have to take the stuff with the, the good margins. But if they're willing to wait and it can be done in one of your slower times, then that would be fine. And you'd find for some clients, they're like, hey, it doesn't have to be done this month. You know, if it gets done the following month, I'm okay with that. And so therefore you're using an area where you would have had a downtime and it was slower and you can now employ your people and now they're not pay, playing uh, com, you know, video games on their computer, they're actually doing work. So you, can, you might be happy with doing that. Um, or you could come back and you could say, you know, at, um, in our package, the way it's priced at $3,000, that includes uh, us coming out for a quarterly tax discussion. So, you know, if I come off that price, I can't do all four of those. What if we just did one uh, annual tax review and, and so I would take three meetings off so I could take out some of the value um, and I could reduce the price accordingly. And uh, they said, yes, I could probably do that. And then you might say, well, so I, I'd pull out those three and, and what if we did 2,600? Uh, but now you've taken something off. So now you don't have to spend that time. Now you can use that for billable hours for something else. That might be a good workable solution. But if you've thought about all the things that you could m manipulate and adjust and change, what all the options were. And if you had done that ahead of time, when you're in the middle, you could be able to suggest those things rather than thinking that it's always just about price. So sometimes you could get the full 3000 because you've adjusted you know, something else in there. Or other times when you come down from price, you have to get some value extracted off of that to justify you coming down in price. That's a better way to negotiate. So those are hopefully three very good uh, strategies you can begin to employ this day to make you a better negotiator. So hopefully you enjoyed those. If you want to know more and you want to go deeper, make sure you check out the Scaling BizScalers Club at scalingclub.com, scalingclub.com. And uh, if you are watching this by video, hopefully you've hit the subscribe button already. If you haven't, make sure you do that. If you're listening by podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button there as well. My commitment to you each and every week is to make sure that I'm bringing you actionable ideas that can help you grow and scale a great business faster. And so I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to check out scalingclub.com. And until next week, to your accelerated success, Bruce out.